Alright, here we have Waterloo. Napoleon is trying to defeat the Allied Army under Wellington before the Prussian Army under Blücher arrives and they combine and completely outnumber them. Now Wellington has three infantry corps under his command and I've got them kind of mixed up in this whole array so that whenever one is drawn somebody nearby will be able to move. Having and a command entirely together is important on attack, but the British are not attacking here. If they need to attack, any of these leaders can get within command range of any of the army. The Prussians begin turning, coming in on turn one, but even by the end of the game, they won't be completely on. So they're a troublesome threat. But being the Prussian army, they'll be very stretched out on the roads. These are minor roads. And it'll take them a long time to concentrate. They cannot be ignored. They're always on the French player's mind. But these are definitely not two combined armies that Napoleon is facing. I begin every game with Napoleon activated and he fires the Grand Battery. It's just the way the Grand... They sat all morning waiting for the ground to dry out enough to make the artillery more effective. And finally at noon, Napoleon said, let's do it. So this is the point. Napoleon says, let's do it. Let's fight this battle. Because I had to wait till noon but it is June, you've got a longer day in the summer. It goes from noon till 10.30 in the evening. That's seven turns, not the usual eight turns that you find in a pub battle's full day battle. So seven turns, opening up the Grand Battery, but they need sixes. You have one, two, three, four. Batteries firing. First one will be on the troops in Papalot. Nothing. So that going, fires on the British troops behind the hills. Third one, now this is the guards artillery. They're firing here. They hit on fives or sixes because they have the plus one guards artillery. And they get two hits and they drive back Vink. One more, he's gonna fire here. Nothing. I have all the chits in here so I don't forget to move these Prussians as they become available. Um, but turn one, only the Prussian fourth court is active. British second corps. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna unpack the bags right here. Fortify the line in this area. It's risky because now the French have a, a target to, for an instant victory. Picton's corps, which is part of, which is Fink is part of, so he can recover because the bags are right there unpacked. When you're playing a two-player game, you actually turn them down like that. The enemy wouldn't know. The other player wouldn't know that there's an exposed. There's an unpacked bags. He'd have to try to guess that and work it out. Hey, that hasn't moved. Maybe that's it. A lot of double blind solitaire, so I can pretend the French don't know, but I leave it face up so I can remember where it is. French second corps, Riley. He moves to there. That's his full move, but now he's within one third of this. The way I play Field of Fire is if you're within one third, then you can simply, you've already, that's close enough, they've already started exchanging. The battle's on. You move them adjacent to, to signify that they're committed to that combat. Napoleon's brother Jerome sneaks forward. Now this is Hugomont. I don't attack Hugomont. It's a complete waste of effort. I hope he invests Hugomont with his best troops because I'll just pass them by and they'll be stuck there out of command. Riley moves Foy's division just out of contact with these British troops. If they move forward, well, they won't have to charge because they'll be in undercover here. They'll be occupying Hugomont. Let's hope they do. British first, under the Duke of Orange. This includes Cook's household guards here. They are not gonna fall for getting trapped in Hugomont. And they're not gonna get pushed back. They're gonna stay right where they are for now. The fourth Cav, they're right here. They're not moving. Waiting for the infantry to break something up. British Cav, they're not moving. Kellerman's Cav, inching forward, sends a division in support of this attack. As Curacers trying to break through. Prussian Fourth Corps, a third, they enter with a third of a move, which on a road is two thirds. They come in here, and they get to about here. So here they are, turn one, they're coming on, but they're just, that's as far as they get. Durland's First Corps, he sends his detachments out looking for the Prussians. Global 6 Corps, the small corps, the, Sar the Hussars are covering their flanks. That is it for the movement of turn 1. By the way, that was turn 1. Mark the combat. Alright. Global's Corps is moving up a hill. So the British have cover. Both sides do three damage. That eliminates a block there. And although it's only two damage because of the 
The bonus for being on the hill, these are Hackett's militia, they can only take two. They move forward, they were not supported. The British East Jewish troops were not supporting Hackett. That end. Here in the center we have the Brunswickers being attacked by Buckalow's division. They do three damage. The British become spent and the cavalry charge in. The Brunswickers fall back. Here we have Clinton's elite, British elite, being attacked by Durlan's 1st Corps Infantry. Now those are British, they're in, on reverse slopes. They go first, but they did no damage. The French did two damage. One, one is absorbed because they're elite. The second one flips them to spent, and they retreat, not wishing to be lost this early in the battle. All right, turn two. Turn two, the Prussian 1st Corps under Blücher and Zeton appear. First Bulow moves, he's got his horse moving on, followed by the infantry. These blocks mark the extended train in, in, in uh, road column. Zeton comes on turn two with a full move. British cavalry, Uxbridge, grabs the household guard and says, plug the line. Since his Cesars in charge and flank the advancing French columns. Okay, Hill's second corps, which includes Clinton, and who's within range of the baggage, unpack baggage so he can recover. Critical. They roll forth the artillery. <coughs> French guard, right guard Cav, moves off to check the appearance of the, of the Prussian fourth corps. Combined arms team of grenadiers, guard, guards, cuirassiers move forward, as well as the young guard and the old guard. Super V is recalled to the left, that's six corps, six corps here. Lobel's infantry presses forward. Pink backs up that line, Picton's troops fall back. Alton falls back behind Picton's men. I've drawn the Prince of Orange's command. Prince of Orange moves to here, that is within range, he sends Word to cook. Let's snuff out those pesky Frenchmen. Next, Kellerman is drawn. French 3rd Cavalry. They charge forward to rear attack the British. Their ball attacks using the charge rule. This combat is going on now. After two rounds of combat, the French are getting the worst of it. <clears throat> In the next round, they're both driven off. Now what this actually means is that the area is still contested, neither has control over it, and whoever gets there first will claim control. Prussian 2nd Corps doesn't come on until next turn. Jerome's division launches forward. Now it would be neat for them to flank that attack and attack the British cab in the rear. I think that's too much to expect from one command and from Jerome. He just goes forward and attacks that. <clears throat> Riley directs his artillery to open up in the hole in the French line there. <coughs> but again, they're firing blind. It does, they do no damage. Hoy will slip into Hugomont. Now it's Durlan's chance. Move the British command out of the way here. Where's Durlan? Here's Durlan. He moves to, to there so he can order them to attack and his cavalry, his lancers, to rebuff the British hussars. The French 4th Cav, these two divisions, moves up to the high. And the movement for turn two is done. Mark the combat. Combat there. Combat there. Combat there. Combat there. Combat there. Decide order of combat. First combat will be the cuirassiers attacking the household guards in the rear. Cuirassiers destroy the household guard. That hurts. And they themselves are now spent. Lobau's infantry charges in to the British allied defenders. Kiemensig who falls back from the assault, and Vink's heroic men step forward. Both fight heroically until neither remains in any sort of formed combat order. Next we have Jerome's attack and the Household Guard Cavalry riding away. Of course the cavalry don't stay to fight and in their race away they push back the Brunswickers and crews. Things have just got very critical. Here we have Durlan's troops attacking Clinton's men with artillery. Artillery first drives back Donzelot's corps, but he was backed up by Marconnier who wipes out the artillery. Now, the British can sustain six infantry losses, so they have three infantry losses and one artillery. Clinton moves up to defend. 
So the battle continues. The British become disorganized, but Clinton doesn't want to retreat because the retreat will break the entire right side of the line. He destroys the French division, but nevertheless, he is forced to retreat. He is trying to avoid. He is up there, pushes those two back, and this is a detachment. And the baggage train, they can push back, but neither they don't have a spent status. So that's how that looks. Combat was here. And the final battle, Durlan's Lancers, British Hussars. Each do one, the Hussars do not want to fight an unequal battle. Turn three, late afternoon. Will Waterloo be decided by late afternoon? Casualties have been very heavy. Let us see. French 4th Cavalry Corps. So these two divisions here. Now, could I see everything? I would say let's send one over here to hold off the Hussars and charge in there and eventually we'll make a, a flank attack. But they wouldn't know about that. So that's what they do. They both charge forward. Lobau 6 Corps is essentially destroyed. He'll move his artillery up there. He's got a few men scraped together to guard it. And that's all he can do. Kellerman's third calf. They ride out and contact the unpacked bags from the side. Now normally this won't be resolved to the end of the movement phase. If you end the movement phase with them in contact. But because of the symbol here, these guys can charge. So they charge. So they've contacted them at the beginning of combat. A quick and decisive end. The British army is broken and must rout. Now the French were two more infantry units shy of breaking themselves. So they were close to breaking. The British had lost three. So they still, they weren't as close as the French. But they still had taken a lot of damage. They'd spin these guys around. Also put them there. All of which is to say here you have six British blocks spent and retreating, the bags are sacked by charging cuirassiers. So it's pretty easy to believe that yes, this breaks the British Army. Wellington has lost Waterloo late afternoon. Good game. Having seen how this played out, it was risky to unpack bags that soon. The line really held <coughs> much better because of it, but ultimately the way things played out, it wasn't enough. I hope you found this entertaining to watch. Please like and subscribe.